Accepting Students. Uh, today's short presentation is on Lord Durham's report. And um, I think I can say pretty safely that this is one of the most important documents in all of Canadian history. So it's really, really important that you come away with an idea of what is Lord Durham's report, why is it important, and um, it will kind of come up again as we move forward uh, through the course. So it's one of the most important things. And so this is Lord Durham. He's very handsome, right? Um, he's wealthy enough to be able to afford to get his portrait drawn and done. Um, he's, he's a really important guy when it comes to Canadian history. Uh, Lord Durham's report is basically the beginning of kind of this idea that we should unite Canada. And by Canada, um, it's going to start off with just the two Canadas, but eventually it's going to be uniting all of the different uh, colonies that, or the provinces that become the Canada that we know and love today. And um, yeah, I think that sets us up pretty well. So Canada, this is the big the issue. What, what's the problem with Canada? If you're living over in Britain, every now and then you're going to open the newspaper and you're going to see a little article about Canada and it's like, oh, hey, they're rebelling in Canada. Oh, hey, they're rebelling in Canada again. Oh, hey, they're complaining about the situation in Canada. What, what's wrong with Canada? What's their problem? And so after those two rebellions in 1837, Britain had to kind of reconsider the way it thought about Upper and Lower Canada. Suddenly it needed to recognize that, okay, these are actually, you know, British people with real ideas and they, they're not just, you know, those guys over there anymore. I think the thing we need to recognize is that um, it, during Imperial Britain, racism was a really, it was quite prevalent. And so there were these different colonies around the world that Britain owned. Not all of them needed to be taken seriously or, okay, I'm going to rephrase that. People in Britain didn't necessarily feel that they needed to be taken seriously because uh, the people there were, were different, maybe backwards, maybe um, primitive. I hate these words, but those were the words that people would have been using at the time. Uh, in Canada, however, these were European people. These were British people who had settled here. And so uh, they were unhappy. That seemed kind of weird. So uh, it was it was important to kind of understand what's going on over there. What's what's happening in Upper and Lower Canada? How do we go and fix it? How do we fix this one call? Like if we can't get this colony working, uh, what are we doing over in India, in South Africa, in Hong Kong, in Australia? Like what are we doing? How do we sort it all out? And so they decided to form a commission to investigate the situation in Canada. And so they sent this guy, uh, the Earl of Durham, who, or who we nowadays call Lord Durham. Uh, that wasn't his name. It was John something or other. Um, but he became, they appointed him governor in chief of the Canadas. So both Canadas. And so they appoint this one guy and they lead him to kind of investigate the situation over in Canada. Go check it out. Tell us what's going on and tell us how to fix it so we can move forward with this Canada question. Because of course they didn't want another situation like they had with the United States with, you know, a rebellion and a whole you know, rejection of the crown and all that kind of stuff. So we got to fix this Canada problem before it gets any worse. So Lord Durham goes and he tries to be really nice, um, but he ends up making some enemies along the way. And so he, he tries really hard not to be unfair and unreasonable. So uh, a lot of the, the government officials, they tended to side with the family compact or the Chateau clique because they identified with them, right? You're Lord Durham. You're a lord. You're born of upper class. You've got expensive tastes. You, uh, you, kind of, you connect with that particular group of people. And so 
there certainly would have been a temptation for him to side with the Chateau clique or the family compact, to listen to them more than the other people, but he tried really hard to stay impartial. He tries not to kind of listen to the Chateau clique or the family compact. He tries to listen to the rebels even, and he encourages, he says, you know, we should really treat these captured rebels with some leniency. We, should, we shouldn't execute them. We shouldn't send them off to become slaves. We should maybe consider them and, and, and try to persuade them that moving forward they can help uh, improve Canada. And so this idea that they shouldn't punish the rebels harshly really made people angry because some of these people had their homes burned down. Some of these people um, had been shot by these rebels. Some of these people uh, really didn't believe that these rebels deserved any compassion or, or fairness or consideration. And so they actually overturned the decisions by Lord Durham. And if you recall, the Lord, Lord Durham was, he was the governor-in-chief of the Canadas. So these guys who were overthrowing his ideas uh, were, were pretty, pretty passionate about this because they weren't listening to the boss. And so after all of this, after all of this fighting and quarreling and trying to fix things, he just, Lord Durham says, you know what, forget it. He resigns and he goes home, which is really sad and kind of disappointing and you would think like what a he seems like kind of a quitter but he he doesn't just give it up he doesn't just pack up and leave and kind of like take his ball and go home he actually goes home and decides to write up a report he writes up this whole report and so here the title here is memorize this so please 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 memorize uh, or write this down just like learn this this is really really important Lord Durham writes a report about the two territories, Upper and Lower Canada, and he suggests, you know, I think we could fix some things if we actually joined the two colonies, Upper and Lower Canada. This would be bad if you were French, of course. Keep this in mind. We'll come back to that. But he also, he encourages that there should be responsible government. So let's join Upper and Lower Canada into one united Canada and implement something called something that would look like responsible government where people the government would be accountable to the people he also recommended that all of british north america should be united eventually someday why don't we connect all of those territories that britain has control over you know newfoundland nova scotia pei all that good good stuff we could connect them all um but that's not going to happen for a really long time. So he writes this up in his report. This becomes known as Lord Durham's report. And this is pretty much the most important document in Canadian history up to this point. There will be more important documents later, but this sets the ground. So know about Lord Durham's report. What does it include? It says, we should join the two Canadas, they should have responsible government, and someday all of British North America should be united. Seems like a pretty good idea. What's responsible government again? Well, according to Lord Durham, the Executive Council needs to be chosen from the elected Legislative Assembly. So if you remember, everyone gets to vote, they get to appoint the Legislative Assembly. Their vote would deter to determine the Legislative Assembly. And then, so in Lord Durham's idea, well, why don't we make the Executive Council come from that Legislative Assembly? So they've already appointed these people, and then they're going to pick the best to become Executive Council. That's a pretty good idea. And then the Legislative Council, so that's the other part, they wouldn't actually have the power to make laws. So the Legislative Council would still be appointed, but they wouldn't be able to make laws. So the only people who are making laws and making like those key decisions are going to have been voted for by Canadians. That is a much more democratic system than what there used to be. It was slow to be adopted, but eventually, a little while later, the two candidates got to, be got to be merged. So after Lord Durham quit, Lord Sydenham, the new guy, he's like, you know what? That's not such a bad idea. So they get merged in 1840 and 1841. So in 1840, they pass the Act of Union. 
And in 1841, it kind of becomes official, and the two, Upper and Lower Canada, become merged as United Canada. Pretty cool. The French, if you were a French person, you did not like this. Because for a long time, uh, if you had Lower Canada, Lower Canada, the French still outnumbered the English. The French still had power and influence and, and all of that kind of stuff. But if you merge the two Canadas, now suddenly French people's influence is much, much smaller, much less significant. And so this was really bad. And Lord Durham knew that this was going to happen. He actually thought that, that one of the solutions for the future of Canada was to kind of force French people to assimilate. Uh, they needed to become English. They needed to kind of just kind of move on, pack up their things, like get rid of this whole being Catholic and preserving French and, and doing your own kind of thing. You need to just give it up, become Canadian, become English. And French people were furious because their culture was really important to them. Their language was important to them. They had been here for a much, like, well, their families had been here for much, much longer. They had a culture. They had views and values and beliefs. And it really wasn't, it, it was really harmful, this idea of merging the two Canadas. And so French Canadians were, were furious. And some of that still lingers even to this day. Some of the, the, the things about Canada are, are unfair for French Canadians. Uh, that's actually the end of the whole presentation. So what I need you to remember kind of moving forward is what is Lord Durham's report? Who was Lord Durham? And what were its consequences for French Canadians and for English speaking Canadians? Um, Basically, if you can't remember what Lord Durham's report was when we go forward, you're going to get really confused. So please, please, please be able to kind of identify the key things about Lord Durham's report. That's it. Thank you.